A question that I very frequently get asked, I would say every single week I go speak, which is 52 weeks a year now for 16 years, every single week somebody will say, now Hoven, how do we see stars billions of light years away? You say the Earth is only 6,000 years old, how do we see the stars? Yesterday on the radio program, on, on the website, Dr. Dino, some guy called in and said, now, Hoven, I did some studies, and in a 6,000-year light year radius, we'd only have so many cubic miles, and uh, all the stars wouldn't fit. I said, oh, wait, 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 you're, you're, who said anything about a 6,000-mile radius? He said, well, you're the one that said the universe is only 6,000 years old. Yes, I did. But I did not say all the stars are within a 6,000 light year radius. <laughs> I've never said that. That would be ludicrous. But how do we see the stars billions of light years away if the universe is only 6,000 years old? And I believe the Bible clearly teaches it's only 6,000 years old. And God made everything. Actually, He made the earth first in Genesis 1. And then verse 14, He made the stars also. Evolution says He made the stars evolve first and then the earth. Well, there's certainly a lot of stars out there. Nehemiah chapter 9 says, Thou, even thou art Lord alone. Thou hast made the heaven, the heaven of heavens. God is claiming that He made them. So, either He did or He didn't. But what about the stars? How do they fit in? Astronomers can see a star blow up about every 30 years. It's not, every, no, it's not like it's on a timetable. It might be every five years, it might be every 50 years, but on an average, every 30 years, a star explodes. And they're looking out there with their telescope and say, oh, wow, there's a new one. A star exploded. It's called a nova. Or if it's a big one, they call it a supernova. Uh, <clears throat> nova in Spanish means no go. By the way, the Chevy Nova did not sell very well in Mexico for that reason. Hey, do you want to buy a nova? No. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> it won't go. But <clears throat> stars blow up every 30 years. Well, they've searched the heavens with these telescopes looking for how many supernova rings are there. They call it a dead star. Or they can find less than 300. Now, wait a minute. If there are less than 300 supernova rings, and one happens every 30 years, you can do the math. I mean, that's about 9,000 years. If the universe is billions of years old, there ought to be a whole lot more supernova rings out there. Why are there less than 300 supernova rings? Uh, because it's less than 10,000 years old? Boy, they don't like that answer at all. But that's the logical conclusion. Anyway, if stars are blowing up every 30 years, we would have to have at least one star born every 30 years just to keep the balance. I mean, countries that have a population problem because they're getting less births and deaths, you know, like Germany, more people are dying than being born. Oh, well, eventually that's going to create a problem, okay? Uh, stars should have to be born. Nobody's ever seen one star form. Not one. We see them blow up all the time. They've never seen a star form, and I'll cover that in a second. Its last estimate by Hubble Telescope was that there are 70 sextillion stars. 70 sextillion. They say the universe is 20 billion years old. Well, you can do the math. That means 6.5 million stars would have to form every minute. We'd have to have 6.5 million stars forming every minute for 20 billion years to make the stars that we know about. That doesn't count the ones we don't know about because we can't see them yet. Who knows how many stars are out there? Sometimes the textbooks will say, well, there are new stars being constantly born in clouds of gas and dust. This is so stupid. How a physics textbook can teach this, I don't know. Anybody that knows freshman physics knows when you try to squeeze gases together, it pressure builds up, temperature builds up, and it drives them back apart. It's called Boyle's Gas Law. Nobody has ever seen dust collapsing into a solid. It would take such incredible pressure to do that. I, I was in a debate one time, and this professor, I asked him, I said, how can you get dust to collapse into a, into a solid? Explain that to me. He said, well, we calculated that if 20 stars explode near each other, it'll produce enough pressure to make a brand new star. I said, now that's brilliant. You've got to lose 20 to gain one. Hmm? I said, you ought to run for Congress. You could help those guys borrow their way out of debt, you know. <laughs> it's not going to get a universe full of stars if you've got to lose 20 to gain one. And even that is only theoretical. It's never been observed, okay. I was in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and they've got a science center down there, and they showed these pictures of star babies. They said, oh, this is a new star forming. No, sir, it's a bright spot, okay. One guy in Science Magazine admitted, the silent embarrassment of modern astrophysics is we do not know how even a single one of these stars managed to form. Nobody knows how stars can form from dust clouds. No one has unambiguously observed material falling into an embryonic star. 
which should be happening if the star is truly still forming. And no one has caught a molecular cloud in the act of collapsing. Precisely how a section of interstellar cloud collapses gravitationally into a star, a double or multiple star, or a solar system is still a challenging theoretical problem. Astronomers have yet to find an interstellar cloud in the actual process of collapse. The origin of stars represents one of the most fundamental unsolved problems of contemporary physics. This guy said, no one really understands how star formation proceeds. It's really remarkable. Nobody knows how this happens. So if they tell you new stars are forming, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're confused or they're lying. Because nobody knows how it happens. There's not even a good theory how you could squeeze dust into a star. Not e and there's certainly no evidence. But here's what happened. They see bright spots appear in the clouds. Right, not in the clouds, in the star, uh, dust clouds in space. They look at this crab nebula or eagle nebula and they're staring at it and all of a sudden one day a spot gets a little brighter. Oh wow, a star is being born. That's immediately their conclusion that a star is being born. I say, wait, wait, wait. Maybe the dust in front of it is clearing and the star was already there. Hmm? Maybe it's a star blowing up. Maybe it's another supernova. Because that's what happens when stars supernova, they get really bright. They don't know that a star is forming. So don't let them tell you that we've seen stars form. Nobody has seen such a thing. All we do is we see them blow up, which is the opposite of what evolutionists need. Now, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, Let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and He made the stars also. Here God is claiming He made the stars, and it says in Psalm, He counts the number of the stars. Not only how many there are total, but each one has its own number. So God will say, oh, this is star number 42 trillion, you know, 718 billion. He, he, he knows the number of each one. And it says, praise Him, ye waters that be above the heavens, in Psalm 148. This is the only verse that says anything like this. Waters that be above the heavens. Now in Genesis uh, 1, it talks about, verse 6 and 7, water that be above the heavens. I believe when God first made the world, it was very, very different than what we see. Mostly land, instead of the huge oceans that we now have. Most of that water was in the crust of the earth. We covered that in video two. But there was earth and there was heaven, singular. King James is the only Bible I'm aware of that gets it right in Genesis 1.1, where it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. All the rest of them say heavens. Okay, that's a mistake. There was heaven, which means expanded place. There was earth, and then from here on out. Then he divides it up into three slices. First heaven, second heaven, third heaven. The first heaven is where the birds fly. Genesis 1 uh, talks about that, verse 20 and 21. Then there was water above the firmament. Now some creationists do not believe in the canopy theory. I understand. I've read their stuff. I think they're wrong. I, th I still believe even, if, and some accuse me, well, you know, you don't agree with us, therefore, you know, you're not a good creation scientist. You know, to keep up on your research. I keep very much up on the research and I disagree. It's not that I haven't read it, it's that I have read it and disagree. Okay? But I believe there was a layer of air for Adam to breathe, a layer of water above to protect him, and then a layer of stars, and then more water. The only verse I have to back it up is right here, Psalm 148. Praise Him, ye waters that be above the heavens. That's present tense. Is there still water above the heavens? Psalm 104 says, he layeth, Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Could it be that there is another layer of water beyond all of outer space? Maybe everything that we see as this universe, which looks like huge, maybe everything we see is inside water, a crystal, and God is outside of that, the third heaven, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Could there be a third layer? where God lives. Of course, God doesn't need a place to live. He, he just is, you know. Psalm 20, 29 says, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Lord is upon many waters. Maybe everything that we see when we step out at night and say, Wow, look at all these stars. Maybe the whole thing is a little snow globe on God's dresser, you know, that He picks up and shakes once in a while. Hmm, how you doing in there? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I like to think that way. But the Psalm 148, the waters that be above the heavens, you know, people have often asked, Hey, where does, where's the last star? And once we find it, what's on the other side? I don't know the answers to those, but just a possibility is that there, according to the Bible, may still be water above the heavens. But there's a lot of stars out there. Hubble estimate was 11 trillion stars per person. That is 76 trillion divided by 6 billion people. Every one of you gets 70, gets 11 trillion stars. 